with all of you. I've enjoyed my time already immensely. It's learned so much. Brother James, hold on just a second here. Brother James is going to be speaking on overcomers shall not be hurt by the second death. His text will be in uh, Revelation, the second chapter, and verse 11. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Amen. This verse is a statement with authority. And it compels us and it calls us higher because of the promise of heaven to be a conqueror and overcomer and not have to, and not have to face the second death. I am blessed that Jesus is so intimate with the church in Smyrna, knowing every detail of their lives, their trials and their tribulations. And it gives us comfort that Jesus looks into every facet of our lives and calls us to overcome no matter the cost. And the cost was great. It wasn't just an inconvenience. It was their very lives. Learning the proper perspective of trials in my life has really blessed me. And I think when Jesus speaks to the church in Smyrna, I feel his sympathy and understand that he's there. Suffering doesn't mean that you're not in God's favor because he was there with the church. He understood. It means that Christ is there with you. Um, Christ was with Smyrna during this, this trial, and he is with us in our trials too. I liked in the, the sermons, I can't remember who said it, but... Look to your left. He's the fourth man in the fire with you. Amen. Tribulation in this world is a guarantee. And it's because darkness hates the light. And it seeks out the light. And it wants to snuff it out. But as darkness snuffs out, sparks fly and lights a new flame. And you can see that as the church spread, as the persecution came in Jerusalem. Let your light shine, and it's gonna shine, no matter what, it can't be put out. Jesus says, my words will never fade. Um, Revelation 6, 9 says, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain, for the word of God and for the witness they had borne. They cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on these who dwell on the earth? Then they were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete, who were to be killed as they themselves had been. Also in Revelation 14, 12, it says, Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Amen. The brethren in Smyrna we're going through tribulation and it says they were poor and Jesus says they were rich and they were rich because of their faith. Jesus is in our corner. He's cheering us on. Every incentive and promise has been given so that we have the faith to overcome this world. As I grow closer to Christ, my desire changes from being bound here on earth to yearning for heaven, yes. to know that my name and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Means that Judgment Day is going to be a celebration for us as saints, a fulfillment of everything we have been longing for.
fighting for, enduring for, and overcoming for. Rejoicing that we don't have to face permanent death and separation from the Lord. There are a lot of distractions here on earth, and they're here on purpose to lead us astray. That's why we are told to set our mind on things above and also to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. There was a runner recently who was running a race and he was winning and he stopped just short of the mark and he even did a celebration dance. But he was passed up and he didn't make the mark. I pray that our faith increases so that we can cross the line and not yeah. stop short. Amen. To fight the good fight of faith and finish the course and have our Father say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. text as it has been mentioned is in Revelations chapter 2 and verse number 11. He who has an ear, let him hear what the, what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. You know, when Jesus speaks, that has been mentioned, it's time to listen. It's time to perk up our ears, Amen. and it's time to turn our head a little bit if needed and hear clearly yes. what Jesus has said. Amen. Why? Because he's speaking to his people. Yeah. You and I are his people, so he is speaking to us as well. His people are to hear and know his voice. John 10 says that uh, my people or my, my sheep know my voice. They hear and know my voice. Jesus is the one who is speaking. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand. Who walks among the seven golden lampstands. He's the one who is speaking. The one who is the first and the last. He is the one that is talking. He's the one who's speaking to us. The one whose words are as sharp as a two-edged sword. The one whose eyes are like a flame of fire, whose feet are like burnished brass. This is the one who is speaking to us. The one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. The one who is holy and true and who has the key of David who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one will open. The one who is the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of God's creation. This is the one who is speaking. When Jesus speaks, we are not to shrug our shoulders and turn and, and walk away. But we are to listen. He is the good shepherd who watches over and cares for his sheep. He is the one who has the words of life. He is the one who is our high priest who administrates and who also intercedes for us. This is the one who is speaking. So what does, and, and this is what the first and the last says. He says, the one who conquers or the one who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. Amen. Boy, we can, we can put our faith into that because of the one who is speaking. Jesus says that he is the first and the last in Isaiah, God referred to himself as the first and the last. In Isaiah 44, or chapter 44, verse 6 through 8, 
he points out that he is the one that is in control. Also in Isaiah 48, in verse number 12, again, pointing out that he is the one who planned and who controls all things. He is the first and the last. And Jesus, here in Revelation, uh, refers to himself as the first and last also. He was there when everything began, and he's going to be there at the end. Amen. This was a comfort and an assurance to the Christians at Smyrna. This was something that they could, um, that assured them that they could put their hope and, and trust and faith in the one who was the first and the last. And also the one who died and came to life. The, the Romans and the Jews were not the ones who were in control. God was the one who was, who was in control. Jesus, he is the one that was in control. And, and the ones in Smyrna, they could have faith in that. Amen. The things that happened to the Christians, even though they may be hard to understand, are, are ordained by God to work out for our good and the good of others. As it's been said earlier, it ha suffering, tribulation, comes for a reason. So even our sufferings are a part of his plan. And when we are opposed, we do not need to fear that God has abandoned us or deserted us because he is there with us. We can be sure and secure in the fact that since we have been called according to his purpose that all things in like are a necessary aspect of that purpose. The church at Smyrna could be overcomers. They could be ones who conquer and they could be ones who were victorious because Jesus was an overcomer, because he was one who conquered, because he was one who was victorious. Amen. That is how they were victorious. That is how that they could overcome. Amen. And that's how we overcome as well. And it's through Jesus Christ. And it's when we are in him that we overcome. You know, looking back, there was a time in my life where I wasn't an overcomer. There were things that I failed in over and over again. I was a slave to sin. I, was li I lived in darkness and I tried to change my behaviors, but I could not overcome. But in Christ, I can. Amen. But through Christ, we can and you can as well. We can because Jesus accomplished everything needed to, for us to become overcomers. Yeah. <clears throat> Jesus, he took away the sins of the world. He delivered us from this present world. If Jesus didn't overcome and, and deliver us, We'd still, we'd still be back in the world. We, would, we wouldn't be free, and we couldn't be overcomers. He destroyed the devil. If he didn't overcome and destroy the devil, then there would be no hope for you and I. He spoiled principalities and powers. If he didn't overcome that, then again, there wouldn't be a way for us to overcome because it was through Christ that we overcome. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> the church at Smyrna, they had a lot to overcome. 
they had a lot of faith to overcome the things that they needed to overcome. We find here that um, in the Church of Smyrna, as has been mentioned earlier, that there wasn't anything that they were rebuked of. There, um, there wasn't anything of them that was said of them that was bad or that they had needed to correct or change. But we find that Christ um, encourages them. And he told them to be faithful, and he encouraged them to be faithful unto death. There could not, there could not be for the church of Smyrna any unbelief. In the church of Smyrna, we don't find any unbelief. If there was, if there was unbelief within the church of Smyrna, they couldn't be ones who have even gotten this far in their tribulation. We can't have faith and unbelief at the same time. We have to make up our mind which one that we are going to have. Are we going to have faith or are we going to allow unbelief to be present? Smyrna would not be able to endure the tribulation and we wouldn't be and we are not able to either with unbelief and doubt within us. You know, I think of Peter who showed great faith in stepping out of that boat upon the water. Great faith. I mean, how that's great faith to, to get out of a boat onto water. <laughs> But, and, uh, and to come to Jesus, that was his desire, to go to Jesus. But little faith, as Jesus said, and doubt, it stopped Peter short of coming to Jesus. He began to sink before he reached Jesus because of his doubt, because of his unbelief. And it will stop us short as well. Unbelief, in uh, James chapter 1 and uh, verse number 16, it says, do not be deceived, or I'm sorry, verse number 6, James chapter 1, verse number 6, it says, let us ask him in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a, a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded and unstable in all of his ways. See, brother, doubt and unbelief have no place within us. It will toss us to and fro, and we are unable to be st stable in our faith. <clears throat> Also, John chapter 20. <clears throat> John chapter 20, when uh, Thomas, in verse number 27, he says, then, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it here in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And I like the King James. It says, be not, be not faithless but believing. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I also think of the Israelites. They, is, they experienced slavery. They, experienced, they witnessed God, in the, as he uh, administered the plagues upon the Egyptians, they watched as the Red Sea parted right before them. They, uh, they had uh, trembled at the power of God as it revealed on Mount Sinai. They tasted the manna from heaven, and they drank 
from a rock in the, from the water that God had supplied. But because of their unbelief, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and did not enter the promised land. We find that Joshua and Caleb were the only two that made it because of their faith, because they did not doubt. Jude chapter 1 and verse 5 tells us, it says, The Lord, having said, or I'm sorry, the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And so we, we find here that unbelief is something that we do not want in any part of our lives. Because of unbelief, that generation of Israelites did not reach the promised land. And we won't reach the promised land either with, with this unbelief a part of us. But faith is the victory that overcomes the world. When, when Jesus returns, he is coming for those who have overcome in him. Those are the people who he's coming to gather to himself. The ones who had overcome this world in him. And it's only a short time. I like in, our, in the text, a little bit up in the, in the passage there, it says for 10 days, just a short time that we, that we have to endure and to overcome. Those who overcome, those who Christ is coming to, to uh, gather, they will not be hurt by the second death. And that is the promise that Christ has given to us and to those there in, in Smyrna, that they will not be hurt by the second death. They will not experience the separation from God for all time. The second kind of death. This is what they will not experience. And boy, that brings about joy Amen. to know that Amen. in Christ, that you and I do not have to experience or be hurt by the second death. Yes. Scripture identifies it as a lake of fire. And it identifies those who will be sent there, but not those who are in Christ. Being out of the presence of God is a terrible and a, and a hard thing to, to, to think about. Being without God. It's a thing that's hard for me to even, even fathom or think about. But praise God that through Christ we are overcomers and that we are conquerors and, victor, and victors because of him and through him. Amen. There will be a day where we will be gathered with the overcomer and with those who had overcome in the past through Christ. I think of in uh, the, the brethren here in Smyrna, their faith. Jesus said, to them, be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Yes, he, he will give them life, the crown of life, if they remain faithful. Right. Also, I think of those in Hebrews chapter 11, those who had shown great faith throughout their lives. And Hebrews chapter 11, I mean, there's 
example after example after example after example of those who had overcome, those who were conquerors, and those who were victors in their lives. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 32, it says, after he had mentioned many who had, uh, who had, he had given an example, who had great faith, he says in verse number 32, and what more shall I say? For the time would fail to tell me of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, and also of Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong, or were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn too. They were killed with the sword and they went about in in skins of sheep and goat, and in the skins of sheep and goats, destituted, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves on the earth. All of these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better that apart from those that they should not be made perfect but boy we have again example after example of faith and how it brought about victory in the lives Amen. of each of these people these people couldn't go through what they went through with doubt in their minds there, there, there was no doubt in in these people in these brethren in these brothers and sisters but they endured, they overcame, because faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Amen. May God be with you as you fight this good fight of faith. Thank you, brother. Amen.